study for the MCAT. Well, you want to give yourself a timeline. That is the first thing. Give yourself a timeline. If you're a junior in college and you want to spend three months hardcore studying, now when I say hardcore studying, we got to clarify that. Let's say you decide to study for three months. Somebody said they want to study for six months, and somebody said they want to study for a year. You are the captain of your ship. You know how smart you are, you know how intelligent you are. Don't lie to yourself. If three months is not enough, don't follow your friends and go and take this test. It's a bad idea. If you need six months to study, put in that hard work of six months. It's going to pay off. And if you need a year because you're working, you're a nurse, or you have other jobs and you try to balance everything, give yourself more time. Because the more time you have and the more dedication you have, the more likely you're going to do well on the exam. So let's say you decide to, uh, student A decides to go for a three months practice to study hard. Now this is the part I don't like about students. Oh, I went to the library today. I got there like 7.30 in the morning and I was there till, oh, till 11 p.m. at night. Mm. So they will come out of the library. Let's say they got there at eight and they studied till 11 p.m. That's about 12 plus three. About 15 hours and you come out of the library and you say oh man guess what I've been in the library all day studying I studied for 15 hours now let's be honest step back did you really study for 15 hours now did you count the time when you went on Facebook did you count the time you were talking to your friends on the phone did you count the time when you went to take your bathroom breaks did you count lunch time and dinner time? Did you count the time when you went on Twitter, when you were checking your email, even when you took a nap in the library? So I want you to be realistic. When you're going in the morning and you try to study all day, you want to study. An average human being can only have a attention span of actually a similar information for 45 minutes. 45 to 50. So what I want you to do is wait for every one hour that you study, which you are not going to study for an hour straight, you want to study for 45 to 50 minutes. When you study for 45 to 50 minutes, take a 10 minute break. Take a 10 minute break and go on Facebook, talk to your friend, call your family, you can go to the bathroom, go to lunch for that matter, or Twitter or email or then you want to take a nap 10 minutes but you got to time yourself you go back and you do another lap of 45 to 50 minutes you do that and after doing that for four hours you are tired I'll be honest with you, you will be tired it's okay get up go to lunch take an hour lunch break that is the perfect time. Maybe you want to review some of the things you've read you know, some of the notes you might just you know while you're just eating or you can, you know, just have a good time. Go back again. Spend another 45 to 50 minutes. If you dedicate, just say, four to six or eight hours a day, you want to break it down by this. So at the end of the day, you are productive. And every day, you have to do questions. So let's say you decide to do verbal today on your timetable. You study verbal and then you do questions, right? You don't, there's really no way to study verbal. You just have to do the question. Understand how they want you to take the exam. How, read the answers. Read the right and the wrong answers. Why it's right and why it's wrong. You time yourself. Don't fool yourself. This is serious. You want to get into medical school. That is your goal. This is going to be one of the hardest things you will ever do. But it's also so worth it. I can guarantee you that. So that's how you approach studying. After three months, two weeks before the end of three months, or two weeks before, or a month before the end of your six months, or a month before the end of your 12 months of studying, what do you want to do? Start doing those practice exam questions given out by the WAMC. When you do them, see how you're scoring. Let's say verbal is your weakness. What do you want to do? Focus on the verbal. I see students do this a lot. They'll be scoring like 11 on a bio and 10 on the chemistry. And they're getting like a four, five, or six on the verbal. And guess what they do? 
They ignore it. Like, it's okay. And they're still reading biology. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. Take verbal and start to knock them out. Do more questions until you have mastered how to take the verbal exam. And remember, do not, do not ever walk into that exam room scoring in a low score range on your assessment and thinking you're going to blow out the exam. All right? So, now that we've learned how to study for the MCAT, we are scoring between 29 and 45. And let's say when you take your assessment, you finally got your dream score of 40. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, people do get 40. Now it's time to reevaluate yourself. You've put in the hard work. Now it's paid off. Now you have to apply to medical schools. And now I'm going to share with you that people have choices. Now you can apply to an MD school or a DO school or you can apply to both. But before I move on, what happens to the student? Because not everybody is the same that takes the exam and ends up getting a 23 or 25 on the MCAT. They're scared. They're worried. Usually, I can guarantee you, there are the students I've just warned you that don't take the exam. And nobody took the time out to tell them not to take it until you are ready. It's okay if you score between 23, 25, 26. However, you just know that you're not putting yourself in a good position to be as competitive as other applicants. So we said, what do we do? Well, it's okay. You have to retake the exam. And what do you do? You follow all the steps and guidelines I just told you at the beginning of this video. And until you break the study on the MCAT, please do not take the exam. Until you're breaking a 30, don't even think of retaking it the second time. So people ask, what about if my GPA is a 3.0 or 3.2? And oh my God, my MCAT scores are great, but my GPA is not good. There's other options. Now, medical schools want to see you're really dedicated to medicine. So what do you do? You can go and get a master's degree. Get a master's degree in biomedical sciences. And when you go get a master's degree, the idea is to boost up your GPA. You want to show them, listen, I went to master's degree and I graduated with a 3.7 because the class you're going to be taking in your biomedical science master's class are similar to the classes they teach in medical school, medical biochemistry, medical physiology, medical anatomy and physiology. So you want to do really well to prove your point and just, it just takes a little bit longer, but eventually now with that great master's degree GPA and a solid MCAT score equals medical school. All right, so why am I hammering GP and MCAT? It's because of that 2%. However, there's all the things you need to do. You can't just be a nerd. That's not enough. They want to see a lot of extra stuff. What does MCAT score and GPA do? MCAT plus GPA. It gets you into the door. That's what it does. That's how we are hammering. It gets you into the door. It gets the, the people that look at your application and say, oh wow, good MCAT score, good GPA. Let's talk to this guy. That's called, it gets you an interview. Now, in the interview, that's going to be a whole different story. But you want to maximize your chances so that every medical school you apply to, you got a shot again and being talked to. And actually, let's see what you're made out of. Tell me exactly why you, want to be, why you want to become a doctor. Why do you want to come to medical school? Well, if you don't get a chance to be interviewed, remember, you're not going to be able to get a chance to prove yourself. So what other things do you need on your application to make it even stronger? I call this extra curricular activities 
research. Do research. Because that is the cutting edge of medicine. That's how we develop. That's how we advance. And if you show interest in research, it boosts your application. Community service. What kind of community service? Serving your church, serving the neighborhood, homeless people, give back. Because that's what doctors do. We give back to the community. We serve the community. And if you don't get involved in community service, you're not showing empathy. You're not showing compassion. You're not showing that you're dedicated to serving people because that's what we do in medicine. All right? So you want to do community service, research. You can do it. Other programs to boost your application, there's summer programs. There's summer programs that can help you do really, really well and even increase your interest in medicine. One of them is called the Med Prep. It's called Nera Med Prep. If you go online, type Nera Med Prep uh, at New Jersey Medical School, they offer this. Uh, you can do summer medical and dental program, SMDEP so that you can get a chance to see other people interested in medicine. And they pay you money while you're still taking classes and seeing how, getting experience in the medical field, see how we actually do things. All right? So, also you want to shadow doctors, right? If you want to be somebody, you want to see what they do. If you're really interested, you want to go to the hospital, you can be an ENT, anything to show your interest in the medical field. But, I got to tell you something, every applicant already knows the secret. This is nothing new. So they all have this on their application. So if I have student A and student B, and one, both of them has research, community service, summer programs, shadowing, you know, got letters from God knows, you know, five, six doctors wrote them a letter, and one has an MCAT score of 35, a GPA of 3.4 or 3.5. And these other applicants get a MCAT score of 26, and it's got a GPA of 3.8 or 3.5. Unfortunately, that's where the decision making is. Just because your MCAT score is not strong enough, you've disqualified yourself. And then here goes the 35 or the person that got a 30 with an MCAT score that gets into school. Remember, the MCAT is a leveling ground. Whether you're from Harvard, Stanford, NYU, all the way to what? Texas County College or, you know, going to uh, the community colleges, eventually going to four-year colleges. We all come together on the level playing field to take the same exam. That's why they call it standardized. We want to standardize everybody. Now, here's my word of encouragement. You can do this you are going to become a doctor. I can guarantee if I can do it, yes you can. I got into the University of Medicine and Dentistry School of Osteopathic Medicine, one of the best schools in the country. And I wanna tell you that you can do it too. Although the applicant pool is increasing, do not let anybody tell you you can't do this. I'm telling you right now, you're watching me, you can do it. All you have to do is say to yourself, I am going to be a doctor and I am willing to do anything, whatever it takes to make me a better applicant, to get me into medical school. And you're going to sit to yourself, I'm not going to rush this. If I have to take my time, I will. If I don't have to take my time, I won't. But know yourself. Know your strength and your weaknesses. And prepare very hard. Put in the sweat. Put in the hard work. Study like you have never studied before. Do this. And with the goal in mind that I am going to get that dream score. And when I go on interview, I'm going to show them I'm going to be the best doctor they can ever imagine. They're going to be an applicant applying to their medical school. Do not let anybody talk you out of this. Because you are the future of medicine in America. All right? If you have any questions, please shoot me an email at support. Support at ftplectures.com. And I'm also the founder of Future Teaching Physicians Lectures.
This is an online program where I teach internal medicine for nursing and medical students and other healthcare professionals. But remember, you are the captain of your own ship. And as Henry Emil said, to me, a man will be endowed with a lot of knowledge so that just with my mere presence, I can relieve people's suffering. The journey of a thousand years begins with a step. And I want you to realize that that step begins today. So when you make up that mind, don't let your medical student advisors tell you you can't get into medical school. You say it into your mind, I will get into medical school and I will be part of that 2% that always gets in every year. And no matter what it takes, I'm gonna be the most competitive applicant, do my best, and I'll leave the rest to God. All right, thank you very much for watching my videos. Till I see you again, it's Adelike Adishina from Future Teaching Physicians Lectures. Have a great day, bye-bye.